you guys for tuning in. Um, today we're going to talk about backpacking through the ELA classroom, trying to get back to tying in our backpack skills um, that we've been working on in JCPS as a district. So we're going to start with creating. Um, creating in the STEM lab um, obviously is my favorite thing to do. Um, we are very um, technology heavy um, based in our STEM lab at Blake Elementary. So we do a lot, a lot of creating and um, on the Google platform. So the first thing that I would like to show you all is how in Google Drawings. Um, I actually just learned how to use Google Drawings, just learned how to use that this year. Um, and my students helped me learn. We taught each other how to use it and use it for different reasons. So one of my favorite, favorite um, Google apps, because you can do so many different things. You can create so many different um, kinds of artifacts. So um, the first one I'm going to show you are two artifacts that my students created using Google Drawings. And then I'm going to show you how you can create something um, quickly and easily in your ELA um, lessons. So if you go down to that green box where it says two examples for my students and click on um, traveling changes over time. Sure. Um, this is um, an artifact that was created by one of my fourth graders, Nemo, and we actually submitted it as an STLP um, artifact for the um, online competition. Um, if you can see, she created a poster about traveling and changes over time and this was actually a collab effort um i worked with her classroom teacher they were working on um what was it something different ways to travel or something and they're reading in her classroom so when she um told me about that i said well how about we make an artifact that goes along with that then they can upload it in their backpack to kind of tie in your um to wrap your unit up and so that's exactly what we did so um this student this was i believe this was her first experience with it as well and it, to me it looks like a professional piece of work um, and they would tell you at first they were a little bit nervous starting to do it but once they learned the ropes of it it's pretty easy and all they want to do is google draws for everything now um and what you're seeing is basically text boxes on top of text boxes that are shading in and backgrounds that the kids love to play with black backgrounds and i'm going to show you how to do all of that in a second but i just wanted to show you an example another example down there is how does airplanes fly now this lesson um was a unit that i did in my stem lab it kind of went on and on and on because i let the kids choose what they want to do next and they did not want to stop talking about airplanes so we started out reading a book um about amelia Earhart. Then it went on to making different kinds of um, paper airplanes and then hoop airplanes. And then it went on to learning about the, um, the four um, forces. So to wrap it up, we decided to create an artifact that um, shows what the four forces are. But also they had to learn how to use um, the group Google um, Drawings app. And as you can see, this student um, used text boxes. Um, he actually put a background to his. That's a picture he made the picture your background and the students also learned what um, transparent backgrounds are when they had to put the airplane there in the center and then they also had to learn about how to enter shapes which are the arrows fill them in and flip them order them and do all of that stuff um it doesn't take long for them to learn how to do it and as soon as they get used to doing it they will be off on their own and you won't really need to help them very much so, so that's another example that you can use go ahead kathleen so what i'm hearing you say is even if a teacher has never heard of Google Drawings before, mm -hmm. you can get it out and uh, give them an assignment. And I also heard you say that yes. you are reading in the STEM lab. What? With technology? Absolutely. You can do that too? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Reading is part of everyday life. Um, it's definitely part of my life, like you mentioned before. But um, it's so easy to go out there and find literature uh, uh, based on whatever it is that you are um, trying to teach your students. Absolutely. So and this I, is a perfect I, example I, of that. I myself. I ask the kids what they want to do next, and I try to go find um, books that's out there, especially books that are already online so that they can read them themselves with the power of pause and listen to the books um, themselves inside of the lesson. And we just go from there. Every week, um, I don't, I plan a topic, but the activities depends on what the kids, which way they want to swing the lesson. I love it. So, yeah, it's, but I have a very, very flexible planning in my classroom. And I, I kind of love it. I, I was... 
right. I was afraid at first um, because it's, you're traveling in the unknown. But once you get used to it, it it's kind of it's cool. It's fun. And it's what the kids want to do. So, you know, they'll be interested in it. Absolutely. All right. And so the picture that you're looking at there with the green grass in the background that I created specifically for you all to show you how quick and easy that it is. The link to that is um, the green link where it says response to reading artifact. But if you want to watch me, um, you want to click on it so they can see it larger. Oh, yeah, I don't have to. Yeah, you did. Yes. OK. All right. So this is the artifact. Now, this definitely is not my best work, but it was my quick work just to show you how easy and simple it can be. Um, of course, you can make it a lot fancier and look better, but I just wanted to show you something real quick. So what I did was um, use the book. Uh, we had um, a picnic this Sunday past by Jacqueline Wilson, one of my favorite authors, and I decided to focus on text connections. And so you can tell your students that, that uh, you know, after you read the book, now we're going to make connections. I want you to give me a connection to yourself, a connection to the text, as well as a connection to the world, which the world connections are so much so difficult for elementary kiddos, but you can guide them through it and help them there. So if you close out of that and click on the link up under it, um, I'm just going to show you a couple of minutes. Um, this is a video. Um, you have to promise not to laugh at me. Uh, I was basically talking to myself as I'm showing you all how I do this. This was on my very new computer that I just got. So if you just have my name and carrying on. Hey, you're okay. I wonder, I'm hoping that we can, <laughs> I'm hoping we can hear through this. Um, so do you want me to start it at the beginning or do you want, just, yes. do you want them to go the back and watch it? Fine. Yeah. We'll just listen for about 40 seconds or something. I am going to do a quick tutorial on how to use Google Drawings to create artifacts for your ELA purposes. So today I've chosen the topic of creating an artifact about text connections. And um, I am choosing to use the book from Jacqueline Woodson, one of my favorite authors, um, called We Had a Picnic This Past Sunday or this Sunday past, sorry. So I'm gonna highlight this video and use this title here in a second, but I'm gonna go to my drive. I'm gonna click new and I don't know why it's doing that, but we're gonna click new, more Google drawings. And when you see Google drawings, it's gonna come up like this with this transparent background. Um, you, The first thing I like to do is set up my page do whatever size I want it to be. Um, I like to set it to the custom. I always tell my kids if they want it to look like the um, normal size paper, just change it to eight and a half by 11. But of course you can change it to whatever you want to change it to. And then as you can see, it makes it vertical instead of horizontal. Then if you want, you can go ahead and choose a background color can make it whatever color you want it to be. Um, my kids love gradients and they love custom making <laughs> gradients. So um, let's see, I'll just pick a gradient color to work with. How about this yellow? Yeah, whatever, we'll use that one. And so I am going to come here and insert a text box for my title first. And the title of the book, I already copied it. Copy and paste actually. I don't want it to keep that. I'm going to, there we go. Paste the time. Oh, you can stop it now. So, I, isn't it fun listening to yourself? I no, love, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I love how Vanita shows though, you know, she went, she's like, nope, that's not what I needed. Nope, that's not what I needed. And she just kept going and, and exploring and looking for it. And I think that's one thing that teachers, we forget to do, right? We forget to just take a breath and keep exploring. You're not going to break Google drawings. You're not going to mess it up. So this right. is an awesome video she made for you that is linked right here um, on her, her presentation. Thank you so much. Yes, you can laugh at me if you want to. Um, I misspell words. It's, it's hilarious when I do the raw videos for people. That's okay. But I want them to experience it. I don't want it to be so perfect. I want you to experience what I go through when I create things or when our students are creating things. And like you said, it's okay if you mess up, get the undo button or delete. That's and keep right. On. That's right. Yes. All right. All right. Go so, the next. Yeah. Next. So, um, like, if you have any questions about Google Drawings, please let me know, and I'll be glad to help you with it. Um, um, we just have a few uh, comments in the chat. If I can give you okay. some praise here, uh, the Google Drawing tool is so awesome to use, and I have to give a shout out to Russ Hockenberry, uh, Zone yeah. 3's digital innovation leader. He actually 
I met him, I don't know, six years ago, but uh-huh. he was using it then about five years yeah. ago and really told, wow. and I was like, what is this? I don't get it. <laughs> um, so shout out to him. But uh, Dr. Coleman is on the chat and she says, these are awesome. I love oh, that students are creating authentic products that are truly ways this information might be shared in the real world. Um, yes. The videos you created of you talking to yourself are always so helpful. From Olivia, <laughs> you have a lot of Blake um, Elementary um, colleagues in the chat cheering you on. So let's keep going. We have about 18 Thank minutes. You. All right. Let's keep it moving then. All right. So next we're going to talk about collaboration. My favorite and not so favorite at the same time. If you've ever worked in an elementary school with technology and you want the kids to collaborate, uh, it can be a nightmare if you don't jump on top of it. But we're going to be positive because once you get them through the basic rules of what it is and what it means to collaborate and not to write random words on the screen and chat over to the side and have a million comments then you are ready to roll and i promise you're going to have a great time having them collab using um let's see i think i'm going to teach you about yes there we go google um slides so the next section is creating collaborative vocabulary slide decks um this was one of my favorite activities um so i'm a, st- I'm a um, special area teacher at blake so in the morning um our whole school does one time and if you don't know what that means it stands for what i need and so what I do is pull a group of fourth graders and I work with them on reading and math skills. Um, so this particular group was a reading group and we chose to read the story, Dear Mr. Winston, which was from their journeys book. Now, I love to use stories in those basal readers because it's ready to available for the children and everybody has a copy. I believe in taking stories and making them their own. You don't have to follow exactly what they're asking you in a book. You make it your own, turn it into what you want it to be. So um, before we got into the book, before we read the book, we chose to dive into the vocabulary words. So we was um, create, well, I created this version of the Freyer Model Graphic Organizer. And so what this organizer does is first, it has the children analyze the words by first defining a word. So that yellow box right there, they will write the definition of the word. They can go online and look. They can look in the back of their book if they want to. So they have different resources that they can use to find the definition that makes sense to them. That's a huge deal with them because sometimes they'll copy and paste the definition and they have no idea what it means. So I emphasize choose the definition that makes sense to you. And then the next box, the green box, um, they're going to use it in a sentence. Um, And we try to push for them to um, create more meaningful sentences. Um, But again, my goal for this activity is not to um, check grammar and punctuation and all that. My goal is to get them to dive deep into the vocabulary words. Um, So then also to analyze and apply meaning to those words. So if you look at the you um they will have to think of examples and illustrations that match the word now me as a teacher this is very difficult for me because some words just don't have a illustration to go with it when i was a fourth grade teacher and we would do this with notebook and paper and try to do an example in front of the class and i would turn it into a competition and i'm like we have 60 seconds of wins what they win was a hand clap Hey, Vanita, sorry, we're cutting out a little bit. Are you there with me? Oh, yes, I'm here. Hmm. Okay, I can hear you now. Sorry, I don't know, it cut out for a second. You're okay. okay. No. Still, uh, okay. still not can hearing you. you. Maybe, now? um, I can, yep. Yeah. It's probably just your, maybe your Wi-Fi. Let's see. Okay. Go ahead and keep trying, we'll see. Okay, is it still messing up? I think you're good. All right. So uh, allowing them to choose illustrations. Sometimes they would take illustrations of themselves representing the words. And I think I have that. I think I might have chosen a group to have that as an example. And then a final box down there, um, I um, changed it to think about it. This is actually a section that's on the vocabulary cards that come with the journeys kits. And on that, and they have questions on the back that makes you connect the word to um, real life. Um, examples. So that first link um, is a template that I use. Which link are you on? Is that the? I was just showing. Yeah, I I, I think teachers love the student examples. So I was just going through showing them. 
No, no, you're fine. No, that first link is just the, the template that you will have to create yourself for the students. I would advise you to go ahead and type the words in for them and then type in whatever questions you want them to think about, then send it to them. Yes. I always keep that example right there on the first page so they'll know, okay, you can go to the student one. There we go. And so here is a student example. You can see a player zones and... I think they have some real life pictures of themselves. They do, there, yeah. Too, it looks. Word. These are really good. We put some gifs in there, gifs, whichever one you call it. I wish <laughs> I would have done this when I was in school when learning new words. Yeah. This was not how we did it. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, yeah. So you, um, that's um, all about the vocabulary slide deck, and it, and I gave them. I didn't give them forever to do it. I really forced them to hurry up and do it so they wouldn't focus too much because they will spend forever doing backgrounds and they love love rainbow backgrounds and they would spend forever doing it. So I just gave them three days, which is three thirty minute sessions, to quickly get it together and learn the vocabulary. All right. So did anybody have any questions about the vocabulary? Awesome. No, we just say they love this idea. Um, and like I said, Tara Johnson said. Um, Students really have a hard time remembering, you know, vocabulary words, but if they're able to create and do things with it, um, that'll make it much easier. Yes, Holy gross absolutely. mindset. Karen Stone is, um, Hi, Karen. <laughs> she's, she is, uh, loving this. She said, why am I over here making one right alongside you? So uh, yes, yes <laughs> shout absolutely. out to you. I love it. Can <laughs> um, you help reach out to me? Yes. All right. So innovating, right. let's go and talk about yeah. innovating. All right, so um, another one of my favorite things to do, I guess I have a lot of favorites, is app smashing with Google Classroom. Uh, so the task here um, is from the same book that I showed you um, before, the Dear Mr. Winston. And what you're going to do is create a book trailer for Dear Mr. Winston using Google Docs, Google Slides, and Spring Pastify with your team. So first you're going to start with the script in Google Docs. So if you can click on that. Now, this is actually from a real thing that my students did in the classroom. They just didn't do the Google Slide part. They just went to straight making a book trailer. But what they did was type a script about what they want to say to get people interested in reading the book. And I made them put space between or make paragraphs for each kind of quote unquote section of their book trailer. So each page of their book trailer or each section of the video that they're going to make. And I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but this reminds me, I also was in a STEM lab and um, would be would constantly be asked by teachers, well, why aren't you teaching them keyboarding? Like, why aren't you teaching the space bar and the inner? And I said, because I didn't have to. So that, that's a perfect example. You are doing a book trailer script and you don't have yes. to teach them, you know, individually about uh, keyboarding. You can blend it in with what you're already teaching. So I just wanted to point that out. Awesome. All right, so after they write their script, then we're going to slide over to Google Slides. That's number two. And you're going to create slides and add the pic. Slides don't have to stay the way that they look. You can change them um, to portrait by just going page step up and putting in the dimensions. Uh, we added a little picture. Line. If you go to the first slide, I snatched these pictures from the real book trailer that they did. And if you want to see their real book trailer. Oh, you awesome. Yeah. If you click there, their book trailer is there. And they kind of go through how they made it, but their book trailer is there, and you can see the the result of their book trailer when they use um, was it clips and iMovie? Oh, I love your digital agility. Talking about slides, <laughs> and then uh, Apple products, Apple Clips is a free app, and also Vanita, um, shout out to STLP. So, what could you do with this book trailer? Oh, if you scroll up. Um, you can see that they submitted this book trailer <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, online um, artifact yep. um, competition. Yeah. Yep. So if you are curious what STLP is, Google it and it will come right up for you. All right. All right. So then they make the slides, they put each paragraph per page. And if you click on the last one, then they use Screencastify to narrate their slides, and it's quite easy. Basically, you're reading over top of your words. And if you just hit play for a second, you can hear it. Dear Mr. For about 60 seconds book here. trailer created by Vanita Burnett. Hi, I'm Clara. That's me, right there, sitting at the table in the library. Going to the library is one of my favorite things to do, especially when I have something really good I want to research. Oops. 
Do you want me to keep going or? Oh, yikes. Is that a snake? 20 more seconds this time. Okay. <laughs> Meet my new pet. Yep, it's a snake. And yep, it's in a shoebox. But just until I get back home from the library. I don't know what kind of snake it is yet because I just got him. One of you my stop good friends now. sold it to me. All right. So awesome. that was really fast, but the slides are there for you guys to review and look at. Um, it's quite simple to go from the Google Doc to the Google, um, what is it, slides, and then to use Screencastify to narrate it. And it turns into, you can actually use it as online books for smaller kids if you want to um, do it for a different reason. There's so many things that you can do. Absolutely. You can do like QR codes and the, the younger students can yeah. scan them and listen to it. Yes. Oh, that's great. I, I love it. And also remember, you have the power of pause because this will be Absolutely. loaded up on our channel. So. All right, yes. communicating. All right, moving on to communicating. Now, um, this is one I, that I ran into accidentally working with a group of my students. We were having trouble trying to figure out what we wanted to do next in class. They wanted to write stories, but we couldn't figure out what we really wanted to write about. So we ran across Story Starters by Scholastic. This is where students could work on their creative writing skills and publish a short artifact online. It has a lot of student choice in there. And if you look in that green part, this is, I took that straight from the website. Students pick a genre, spin the wheel for a randomized prompt that introduces a style of writing, a unique protagonist, and an interesting situation. So we're going to click through here. I'm going to walk you through the steps kind of quickly. I have screenshots of the steps. First thing the students would do is choose from four themes, adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, or scrambler. Here you are promoting student choice again. Go ahead. And then they will enter their name and grade level. It's important to know that this does not save any work at all. It doesn't save their name. It doesn't save anything. So that's a good and bad thing. And I'll tell you about that at the end, how you can get around that. So they would write their name or write their name in and choose the grade level. And you don't have to stick to your grade level. Choose any grade you want to. Go ahead. You're good. Then they're going to spend that wheel right there where you see the yellow handle. They're going to spin the wheel and it's going to give them a, a funny um, story starter. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, this one chose, I can't, uh, can you go back real fast? Sorry. So this one, if you see the four different, no, go forward one more to step four. Yep, right there. This one chose them to write a funny message to a nice turtle um, who goes on a camping trip. This right here promotes student choice again because if they don't like this scenario, they can click on those look like bar stools to me, but they can click on those little buttons right there to spin the individual wheel to get different choices to make whatever they want. Okay, you can go ahead to the next slide now. All right, so then from there, they're going to pick a format again promoting student choice. They can either choose a notebook style, a letter style, newspaper style, or a postcard. And then they can also pick if they want to include a drawing that they will create or not. If you go to the next slide, this one shows you a preview of what it looks like to write in a notebook format. You can go to the next one. This one shows you what it will look like if you choose the letter format. You can go to the next one, please. This is a preview of the newspaper format. Next slide. A preview of the postcard format. Next slide. And so I chose to um, the newspaper format. Then you're going to begin writing. It's going to take you outside of that for a second to give you more space to write. The good thing about this is that it does have a spell check on it. It tells you how many words you have written over there on the side. It reminds you of the prompt that you have. Now, ignore that I totally misread the prompt, but it's cool. I still have a nice story, I believe. <laughs> and, then you, <laughs> and then you just click done. And then it takes you and puts it in that uh, whatever format you choose. You could choose to illustrate it here or not. You have those options to start all the way over, add pages, um, switch formats if you want to. And then when you click all done, so go to the next slide, please. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> It'll ask you if you want to um, print or download it. You can go to the next slide. I always download it or if I print to the Google uh, print to Google Drive. Now your work is published. It pops up as a PDF. You can choose to save your artifact in your Google Drive, print it out, or what have you. And then once you save it in your Google Drive, then the kids can put it in their backpack. Backpack. <laughs> yes, my yes. daughter did this, and she's five, going on yes. six, but she loved this. <laughs> 
And she yes. said that she was going on YouTube to be a YouTuber. Like she yes, just thinks it's the coolest thing. To, uh, subscribe to his channel. Just like I love it. Is. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. All right. Awesome so ideas. I'm say really quick about that. I know oh, I yeah. The last section. No, you're fine. Um, a good thing and bad thing. A good thing is that the students can publish in these awesome formats online. The bad thing that, that it doesn't save. So what you can do is have them pick whatever they want to at first. Take a screenshot or write it down. And they can come back to this at any time. Pick any, any, um, any of the words and then just go to a format that they want. You don't have to match the, clearly, you don't have to match the format with what the story starter is. You can type whatever you want to, and that's kind of how you get away around doing that and coming back at a later time. They can type it in, like, Google um, Docs or something, and then copy and paste it in there if they choose to. Awesome. All right, move on. <laughs> All right so last Last is, but not least. The definitely not least. <laughs> I keep on clicking the arrow. There we go. <laughs> Globally and culturally competent citizens. Absolutely. So in short, um, my STLP students um, did a huge uh, passion project called Blake's Lemons Project with a twist. It was a lemonade stand to help the homeless. And in that blue box, the standard that they were addressing here was students explore local and global issues and use collaborative technologies to work with others to um, investigate solutions. So when you get a chance, check out their website there and check out that featured video, which, which is on the website. You can click on the website for like the last little two minutes that we have. They actually explain to you how they use technology to make their project come to life. And I can't talk about this. I'm going to let Kathleen talk about how they want STLP. <laughs> I still get teary eyed over it. This was um, amazing. <laughs> and, you know, it's just it goes to show, though, also, Vanita, that STLP isn't something extra. So everything that you've shown today, um, all of the examples um, that follow underneath our backpack skills, for one, they also follow a line very closely with the ISTE student standards. So if you are viewing right now and you're not and you're not aware of what, what those are, you really should check them out because they align almost perfectly with our backpack success skills. So Dr. Car Carmen Coleman, who is still um, here in the chat says, um, this session has given so many examples of the kinds of products our kids need to be creating in the year two th 2020. Uh, so often we get stuck on poster boards and markers. Yes. Um, yes. And so she said, I did. I'll speak for myself. And um, tons of shout outs there for you and as well. Okay. But here are the ISTE standards. And if you've been with us for these past 30 minutes, these are exactly what Vanita has been talking about. So the same mm -hmm. thing with their Lemons Project. Her students were the first ever in JCPS history, K-12, to win um, STLP yeah. State and so um, they won with this project and a lot of actually everything that they did for the project were they followed under PBL. They follow under the, mm -hmm. the backpack skills. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. she's done a great, amazing job of giving examples. Um, here's their video that kind of talks about what they did. It's five minutes, so I won't show it all. But the kids made this video about their project. Imagine enjoying your rest in your nice, big, warm, soft, king-sized bed, and then boom! The next thing <laughs> you know, you are sleeping on a park bench, hungry. And so they go through to talk about why they uh, did this project, and their project was for, um, they raised supplies for um, kits to make for homeless veterans. And mm -hmm. so they worked with the community, um, I think it was the PTA or, the, or maybe the STLP students' parents, help make their mm -hmm. cute little lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. um, and But it goes through and talks about what Lemons Day is. So I really um, hope that you'll look at this and get some ideas and join us next year at STLP Regionals. Absolutely. So thank yes. you, Vanita, so much. Um, so much love in the chat. Me. You're very welcome. Oh. I. Yeah, tons of love in the chat to you and great resources. This is exactly what teachers want to see or how, you know, yeah, we have Google drawings, yes. but what do I do with it? So you yes. have student examples and um, great job. Thank Thanks you so for much being for here. Me. Thank you, everybody.